Witness the NBA playoffs. The injuries have been brutal. The action intense. And Underdog Fantasy, the sponsor of this video, will only make things more interesting. Welcome to the fantasy sports realm, where games of skill are the opening salvo. Consider their pick'em game. It's as simple as selecting higher or lower on player stats like points, assists, rebounds, and even combinations of stats. In my case, for someone like Luka, you have to go higher on the point total. It's a no-brainer. Jason Tatum, just a hunch he's not going to hit that rebound total. I'm going to go lower there. Al Horford, he's an ageless wonder. I'm pounding the higher for points there. And this isn't just for basketball, but for any sport you can think of. Yes, even League of Legends. Perfect. With Scorchers and other daily pick'em specials, you have a chance to win up to 100 times your entry. They also just launched Pick 8, where you can make more picks and win even bigger with more ways to win. Underdog Fantasy is available in over 30 states and Canada. The time to join in is now. Click the link in the description and sign up with promo code TREE to claim your special pick and up to $250 in bonus cash in your first deposit. There's a Game 1 Jason Tatum special pick for new customers, and there's a Game 2 Kyrie Irving special pick for new and existing customers. And don't forget to follow Underdog Picks on Twitter for more promos, giveaways, and specials. It's a win-win. With Underdog, you'll become a true fan favorite. And as always, don't forget to play responsibly. <laughs> Call me an old curmudgeon, but I hate the playing games. The cheap cash grabs that put mediocrity on a pedestal. Even then, Miami did make it to the finals from there last year. And they're still considered playoffs, so I'll start with those for the sake of tradition. And this first elimination is one that many fans have celebrated. Are the Warriors finally dead? Am I dreaming? A long menace to an unfucked NBA over the years may be reaching their downfall. And it happened in the mediocrity invitational to the Kings. Kinda hard to win when you turn the ball over 16 times. Not exactly good when a team known for prowess beyond the arc was substandard in that category. Choked out of Sacramento like Draymond did to Rudy. Revenge granted to their opponent. There will be no miracles here. Clay's headed to the open market and the core might not have much time left. Curry can only chuck threes for so long before his body goes. CP3, your magic in delivering winning to franchises has been thwarted. And this might be the end of the road. He will be enshrined at Naismith, but he's like Sauron after the eruption of Mount Doom. No rays. Rest in peace, Dayan Maloyevic. The perpetual jinx that is Sacramento shall continue on. I don't understand. Against most teams, they're a formidable opponent that's versatile and balanced. When they play the Pelicans, they morph into their Vlade Divac's GM days. If you take out their games against New Orleans, the Kings would have probably been the sixth seed. That's how bad things were. Winless in every contest. And most of them were blowouts. But what the hell was the excuse in the playing game? They were without Zion. Down their best player and you're still getting wrecked by 20? You held CJ McCollum to seven points and you still can't shoot from three? What the hell? Do you know the lesson here? Don't play your worst basketball just before the playoffs. If you do, you get stuck in mud like the Kings. Does everyone remember when they shocked the world and made the conference finals a few years ago? That almost seems like ancient history. In fact, I'm more amazed they made it there when they live up to the modern NBA stereotype. They don't play defense. Even if they tried, they cannot play defense. An open door to showcase the offensive talents of their opponents. Sure, blame injuries, but when you're getting the doors blown off you by the fucking Bulls, it's time to look in the mirror. This franchise needs a hard reset. When the rumors of trading away DeJounte and Trey are as rampant as they are, it's inevitable. Do you really want to build around a guy with a minus 27 point differential on the floor? Things are a mess and the organization's a shit show? Nah, best to bury your head in the sand. The Hawks won the lottery! It's gonna mask a shitload of issues as- Oh no. Detroit got the fifth pick again? That's cruel and hilarious. I'm more surprised that the Bulls managed to beat the shit out of a team before this moment. This is entirely predictable from the organizational equivalent of Limbo getting scorched by the heat. A group without Jimmy Buckets at that. If that doesn't scream middling dog shit, I don't know what does. Somewhere Sam Hinkie and Sam Presti wake up in a cold sweat. Chicago needs to be nuked. They have nothing that signifies a playoff caliber roster and are trying to bash through a brick wall with a foam dodgeball. Not to mention DeRozan's a UFA. This is the failure of the playing game. It gives teams like this pretend relevance so they can say nothing's truly wrong. Don't rip the Band-Aid off, there's promise in there somewhere. 
Did you see how well Kobe White did against Atlanta? No matter what happens to them in a given season, it becomes Groundhog Day in New Orleans. Just like the groundhog may or may not see his shadow, Zion sees an injury for at least six weeks on the show. You already know the rule. No Zion, no winning. Except against the Kings, apparently. There was none of that luck against OKC, as the Pelicans were repeatedly struck by lightning. This was supposed to be a series? I think people simply forgot and just do an nod at Chet Holmgren and SGA. You wanted the smoke? Well, they brought the thunder. And New Orleans just lied down and died. Send these fuckers to Galveston. The dirty water there will wash them away like refuse on the beach. I'm somehow not surprised by this. Just because Kobe got a statue doesn't mean your fortunes will change. The Lakers have been a team in turmoil for a number of years now. And despite constant coaching changes and drama ahoy, they can't seem to find that spark that made them a threat in the past. Flashes of excellence, but against Denver? Good luck with all that. The Nuggets are a nightmare for them matchup-wise. I get that, but did you have to seriously blow double-digit leads at halftime in multiple games? Was that the price for finally beating Joker in a game in the playoffs? Or is it LeBron being critical of officiating? Oh no, you can't get double the free throw attempts of your opponent like in the play-in game. We'll feel so sad when you play with Thanasis James. But you shouldn't feel bad at all, Lakers fans. You have another Mickey Mouse trophy to cherish. The in-season tournament? This is the NBA's response to the NFL infringing on Christmas? The biggest story in basketball this side of back-to-back -back humiliating exits from the playoffs. Phoenix was hungry to get out of a self-imposed hell. A deal with the devil had to be reached. His name happens to be Bradley Beal. A super team rivaling the Brooklyn Nets in size and notoriety. There's only one problem with everything. You have no bench. And you have no point guard. With only three and a half players on the roster, the supposed super team burned into a supernova. Know how bad it got? They got swept by the Timberwolves. Not even swept, more like completely obliterated by them. This was a team the Suns had crushed all season. Mr. Beal, congrats on the first sweep in your life by fouling out in game four. What a wonderful package of rewards this will bring. No control of any of their draft picks until 2031. Locked into brutal contracts, and Beal doesn't seem keen on showing you mercy. You can't admit total failure in an enterprise, though. Simply cut the head coach's heart out. Frank Vogel will be sacrificed for the rise of Mike Budenholzer? Nothing like desperation. Breaking news! James Harden is upset. I repeat, James Harden is upset! In a situation that's never played out in his career, he's off to greener pastures to form a championship core with a team that doesn't get close to it. Strange for the Lakers' little brother with a white-hot start to simply wilt like an old flower, but traditions cannot be forgotten. Another notch of failure is added against the Mavericks. What do you think happened? With the sun setting in the West, Kawhi suffered another injury. Right knee inflammation put the Clippers up in flames. No load management in the world could save them from Luka's wrath. The only reason why more people aren't laughing at the Clippers is because Phoenix happened. Yet even then, the questions linger on. It starts with PG-13. He may have played his last game in LA. Will Kawhi give a decent return on investment for his new extension? What happens with Westbrook? Even with a new logo and extending Tyron Lue, there's still a lingering stench with this franchise. I give it another three months before Harden gets upset again. Buddy, if you keep shitting it in the clutch, maybe the problem is you. Alas, the voodoo sorcery of undrafted spirits can no longer save you. Miami had that power in seasons past, but against this Boston team, they learned from last year's horrifying Game 7. The Celtics have that old Irish luck. This leprechaun smoking a victory cigar along with Red up above. And their opponent's best player is unable to play due to an injury suffered in the pity tournament, it's going to be a very short series. And when said injured player is trolling the Celtics on social media, he'll get called out for it by Pat Riley. The problem with the Heat is that they need every single thing to go right for them to go far. Even with an incredible comeback in Game 1, Boston was just way too much for them. Despite no Porzingis in Game 5. Do they have enough to get over the dreaded wall? Jimmy's not exactly a spring chicken anymore. It's a frustrating endeavor indeed. The more things change, the more they somehow stay the same. At the beginning of the year, there was hope. Billy looking strong, Maxi becoming a star, and Joel Embiid putting together an MVP season of Envy. <sighs> then Embiid got injured. The season was over right there. It's not just that the Sixers are worse without him, and they're nearly useless. They went into free fall without their big man. 
despite a massive return to form once he came back, it wasn't enough to beat the Knicks. You can't stop Jalen Brunson, you get to lose the series. A pure infestation of New York cancer that spread everywhere. Even Wells Fargo Center wasn't immune to a sea of orange and blue. Don't worry, the refs will somehow be blamed for that one too. But even for another predictable series loss, this one doesn't feel as miserable. Tyrese Maxey broke out into a superstar. Did you see his game five? Fucking incredible. Now if Embiid manages to stay healthy, they may be able to see the third round for once. It mostly depends on their offseason. They're probably gonna throw all the money at PG-13. Anything to get rid of Tobias fucking Harris. A goose egg in game seven. Take a bow. You can't shit on Orlando for going out like this. It's been actual ages since the Magic have been anywhere near relevant and they took a franchise with far more pressure on them to the brink. This was their learning experience year. They have a potential star core that can lead to more in the future, and they're very, very young. When in doubt, trust in Paulo Banquero. Orlando's problem is one facing many teams. They just don't have enough. Their offense lacks depth and consistency, and the offseason could lead to a fix there. Have you noticed how much cap space they have? If I'm Orlando, I'm licking my damn chops with what's available for the taking. It's the return of a long lost age for the Magic. They will load. What a strange feeling this is. If I had an award to give for best comedy, it'd go to the Bucks unanimously. What a hilarious shit show for everyone and their mother to witness. One of the best records in basketball masking a shitload of team issues and locker room tension. Adrian Griffin was overmatched in the role, lost the trust of the players, and was beheaded in front of Vicer Forum. Their answer to this was apparently a 2008 vintage. Fucking Doc Rivers? Griffin's mentor? Are you trying to blow games or something? In-season collapse is a lack of roster cohesion and the inevitable feeling they'd lose to an inferior opponent on paper were just a smattering of features available. The rest were injuries to Dame and Giannis. A two-for-one deal. Not that it mattered, they were a mess with them dressed anyway. This was a cratering so massive that they lost to a team that hadn't won a series in a decade. Back-to-back -back ugly first-round losses to go with the head coach carousel have proven that the Bucks owe their good reputation to a toe on the three-point line. Any other outcome, they'd be the chokers of the decade. The only accurate passing by the Bucks in April was Pat Bev throwing the ball at fans. I cannot comment any further on his actions since I'm not subscribed to his podcast. I know what a pro wants. <laughs> what a pro needs. Whatever makes me happy. Sets you free. And I'm thanking you for knowing exactly what a pro wants, what a pro needs. Whatever makes me happy sets me free. And I'm thanking you for knowing exactly what a pro wants, what a pro needs. Whatever makes me happy. I deserve to lose with that fucking commercial alone. Short the shit out of AT&T. Don't be too upset, okay? See, with that cap space and extremely young roster, you'll be back. <laughs> Title defense, huh? What the fuck was that? Is this supposed to be the mark of a champion? The Nuggets were two contrasting franchises against Minnesota. First two games, fucking terrible. Smacked around at mile high. Somehow unable to stop a damn ant and two giants by his side. Then bring reality into the picture with three straight wins. Their true potential realized to the brink. Endless chances to finish off and bury these wolves in a mass grave. So what the hell was game six? Denver went to shit. Actual shit. How do you not score double digits in the fourth quarter? As a team. And game seven turned out to be even worse. Championship contenders tend to hold 20 point leads, you know. Did anyone show up in this series besides Murray and Joker? Michael Porter Jr., you there? Maybe they can make a three pointer when needed. Good lord, what an absolute disaster. Minnesota saw a complacent team and pounced. Ants just teabagging your grave. This is more humiliating than that Brazilian Twitter account. He's that Donovan's been from New York, cheering his son on. When will people learn? We've been over this fucking scenario countless times over the last decade, yet they keep tempting fate. It's like the Candyman. So you want Boston three times in front of a basketball court. Don't be shocked about what happens as a result. The Celtic Candyman likes to take a pound of flesh or six from those that call to him. As he swings his knife, he took out a bunch of players. <laughs> Donovan Mitchell out for the last few games of the series. Then comes back and takes out Levert and Allen too. Slaughtered. No mercy. Everyone and their mother's now pissed at Jared, but it's indicative of the Cavs franchise. It's stalled out. Not developing as expected. 
Chaos and concern around every corner. JP Bickerstaff's seat is searing hot as the team keeps collapsing in big situations. Are the lights still too bright for them? Where do they go from here? Hope for the third coming of the GM? Better luck of winning the Powerball. Then transported to the mid-90s. The Indiana Pacers humiliating the New York Knicks in the playoffs. Somewhere I expect Reggie Miller's doing the choking Tom with this revelation. So what caused their demise? Everyone pretty much died. That's all there is to it. Julius Randle's been out since April due to a season ender. Boyan Bogdanovich got shot from range against Philly. Mitchell Robinson lost his ankle again in game one of the damn series. OG's hamstring decided to get finicky at the worst possible time. Then add even more on top of that. Not bad enough the Knicks somehow got punished for crimes dating back to Isaiah Thomas. With their roster decimated, Indiana continues their survival by simply not fucking up. Although I don't know if shooting 67% from the floor in a Game 7 is merely passable. A magical run undone by the clock striking midnight. As it happens, Jalen Brunson breaks his hand. It was over by that point anyway. Oh no, you guys, ESPN can't talk about the Knicks for four-fifths of the broadcast. What a horrible tragedy. This was the chance for the Timberwolves to overcome every single narrative out there. To turn themselves into household names, to get that last laugh about the Rudy Gobert trade, to show the world that they're for real. Nas Reed, for Christ's sake! Stereotypes exist for a reason. In typical Minnesota fashion, the Wolves became Kyrie's philosophy on the earth. Flat. You make all of that noise for the first time in decades, and emerges as a superstar, and you lay a gigantic egg in Game 5? The Wolves had a significant advantage in the paint! All the maps feature are Lucas Endless Whining and Kanye Irving. It'd be nice if that advantage came true. They couldn't convert from range. Cat could have had a machine gun and he still would have missed his shots. As the team is yelled at in film sessions, they're at the crossroads. The window is sprung open, but time is short. Massive extensions for Cat and Ant are kicking in. The Stifle Towers got a player option after next season. And role players are gonna be free agents this summer. These next few months will be the difference between a disaster and the first title in Minnesota since H.W. was president. There's work to be done. Get busy. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the Pacers are no longer up against an injury-riddled mess or living soap opera. They get Boston. Even if the fans plead for mercy, the Celtics are simply going to kill their firstborn sons to prevent the state from thriving again. For Indiana, that sacrifice is going to be Tyrese Halliburton. Turns out tempting fate has its consequences. The rest comes in the games themselves. Game one up by three. All you have to do is you fuck the ball. And Jalen Brown tied a game in the final moments. And you blow it. Great. Game three. A 16 point lead in the third quarter. Hold this lead in the series has they blow it. Game four. Another lead. They blow it again. No points in the final three and a half minutes. Yeah, this team is cursed. A tremendous season delivered with a punch to the face. Now the question lies with Pascal Siakam. Does he want to stay here or will he pull a PG-13 and move on? Do they simply try for PG-13 again? They have the cap space to do it. Larry Bird isn't going to try to make him into a power forward again. It still stings nonetheless. What the hell could have caused such pain? We want Boston! We want Boston! Every damn time. Oh, what fantastic shit shows we had on display here. The super teams crumbling into dust sprinkled on top of an endless wave of injuries to key players. It's a war of attrition, and there are only two teams that remain standing. <laughs> Dallas against Boston. And I wonder what side most of the world's gonna be on. Quite impressive of the Mavericks to revive from... Let me look up the words I said about them last year. A gigantic train wreck. The total disaster was quickly recovered on the backs of two superstars that developed a chemistry that's the envy of the league. Luka and Kyrie. The team depth hasn't been there for the most part, but when Doncic is pulling the bullshit he has on a consistent basis, who needs it? PJ Washington's been the third wheel of this group, being a solid trade deadline piece for the team. Plus there's the dreaded law firm of Derek, Derek, and Daniel as forwards and big men. In these finals, the two-headed monster is going up against the basketball equivalent of a Death Star. Do you try to stop Jason Tatum? Or perhaps Jalen Brown can be controlled? If they can, you have to deal with the ageless Al Horford. What about Drew Holiday? Making us realize that Boston was the real winner of the Dame trade. Let's not forget the Swiss Army knife known as Derek White. Also note that Porzingis was out for a good chunk of these playoffs. 
and they still dominated regardless of opposing injuries. On paper, the Celtics have the depth and advantage in the paint, but Dallas more than makes up for it with high-end star power. Either way, we will be getting a somewhat fresh champion, building a statue for Luka or for Billy King. Now, I firmly believe that the Mavs will make this an interesting series unless the fans do something like tempt fate or defy the gods. Congrats to the Celtics on the series win. The Heat will let it play out. It's over. At last, the long wait is over. After 47 years, the Denver Nuggets can finally call themselves NBA champions.